I'm Insomniac, and this is the Loosh One Hand. Who are you? Insomniac. 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 Okay, before we get into this review, first thing I should do is take the watch off that I'm wearing that I'm not reviewing. Not sure how I forgot that. This is my... Orient Mako 2 USA, which I have reviewed on this channel if you want to go check that out. Anyway, let's pretend I wasn't wearing that. So first of all, I want to give a big shout out to the grumpy old marine wannabe. No, I'm not calling him that. That's the nickname he gave me, so that's what I'm using. Anyway, we've been talking about this watch since before he bought it. Uh, he bought it, sent it right over here. Really appreciate that, so thank you very much. If you have any watches you'd like to send in to be reviewed here on Should I Time This, they will be reviewed, insured, and sent back email me at shoulditimethis at gmail.com and I will let you know where to send the watches. Also, before we jump into this review, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, because I have a lot of awesome watch reviews coming up for you soon that I don't want you to miss. Okay, let's get into the watch. The case on this watch is about as understated as can be, with nothing really stand out or impressive, but it does have one big thing going for it, the dimensions. It's a 38 millimeter case and only eight millimeters thick, so in terms of profile on the wrist, it's small and light, yet because the dial is almost the same diameter as the case, you still have plenty of presence and legibility, which we'll get to later. As for the finishing, two different sites tell me two different things. One site says this case is made of brass, which I highly doubt given the price point and the fact that it's obviously chromed or coated in some way, because clearly what you see here isn't brass. Another site says it's chrome plated, so we'll go with that. Uh, quality of the finish is okay, uniform, and generally understated overall. The case back is a snap-on style, and to be 100% honest, I have absolutely zero idea what's going on here. You have all these random etchings on the case back, but I don't know if they're supposed to be watch parts or modern art, uh, no clue. And I can't tell you what it says around the outer edge of the case back because it's all in Russian but I'm assuming it's general information about the watch. Last but not least, we have the crown, and it's the only part of this case that I don't like. Visually, it's okay. It's the right diameter for this case, and it matches well, and it has a decent grip for winding the watch, uh, but you have to pull with some serious force to get the crown out to adjust the time, and sometimes it doesn't completely pull out to where it's in the adjustment position, so you think you're ready to set the time, but you wind up wiggling the hand around while you partially wind the watch. Uh, the crown only does two things. I expected it to work a lot smoother and be a lot more simple to manipulate. The dial on this watch is insanely simple, plain, and cheap looking, but it's also perfect for this watch. And no, I'm not being sarcastic, I'll explain what I mean in a second. Starting with the aesthetics, it's a plain, very slightly textured white backdrop that almost reminds me of cardstock paper. All of the text, numerals, and indices are printed in black. You have what might be the brand logo under the 12, although to me it kind of looks like a spastic squiggle. And I have no idea what it says above the 6 because, again, it's in Russian. So aesthetically, there's nothing special here to point out. In fact, as stated earlier, I think it looks cheap, but functionally, the style is excellent. One of the biggest challenges with a single hand watch is having a layout clean enough and detailed enough to be able to give you a usable reference for actually telling the time. The super simple black printing on white backdrop track around the outer edge of the dial uses three separate line lengths to highlight full hours, quarter hours, and five minute intervals. And even though they're small lines and it's a small track overall, being that the watch is only 38 millimeters in diameter, if you have decent vision, you can actually make out all of the individual lines and lengths of those lines pretty easily. Pair that with the single hand on this watch, which not unlike the dial itself is plain, simple, and looks kinda cheap, but just like the rest of the dial, the functional design of the hand works perfectly on this dial. It's the perfect length, stretching all the way out to the shortest of the lines on the time track, and it has a needle fine point at the end so you can see clearly where it's pointing, which on a single hand watch is everything if you want to even remotely be able to tell the time. So visually, it's nothing to write home about, but functionally, it's excellent. Time at a glance on this watch comes with a disclaimer. You better have great vision. If you don't have eagle eyes, the rest of what I'm about to say won't matter, because you really do have to visually focus on a very minuscule portion of the dial to try to tell what the time is on a single hand watch. With that said, time at a glance on this watch is excellent for a single hand watch. As stated in the dial section, the black hand and black printing contrast perfectly against the white dial, and the hand is a perfect length and has a sharp, precise tip on it, 
so you can see almost exactly where the hand is pointing. Without too much straining, I can tell the time on this watch to within three minutes or so of whatever the current time is, which again, for a single hand watch, is excellent. The strap on this watch is the opposite of the dial. It's visually handsome, but functionally pretty bad. Black leather with white stitching and a polished buckle all match the watch body perfectly, and the style of the strap they used here is great, just a clean leather strap, no phony alligator patterns or ridiculousness. The issue is with the quality. It feels super thin and cheap, and I've worn it maybe three times since I've had it here, and already you can see some creasing down by the size holes. Add that to the fact that for some reason the tolerance between the sides of the strap and the inside of the buckle is so tight that it actually takes some effort to slide the strap through the buckle. And what you're left with is an immediate urge to put a different strap on this watch. So it looks the part 100%, uh, but it's not a great strap. Last but not least, we have value. As of the time of this review, this watch can be purchased on Amazon, as you see it here, for $64.95. Now, despite the fact that this whole watch kind of looks and feels cheap and everything's in Russian, uh, the point of whether or not it's a good value is actually a simple if-then scenario. If you want the novelty of a single-hand watch that you can actually tell the time on with some degree of accuracy, plus the bonus of a hand-wound mechanical movement instead of quartz, then I actually think this is a great value for about $65. There's literally nothing impressive about this watch, but $65 is not a lot of money, and it does the job. It's a single hand watch that's actually usable. So to me, that actually makes it worth the small amount of money that it costs to own one of these. So I noticed I've seen quite a few of these recently around internet land, and a couple pictures on Instagram, etc. It seems like this cheap single hand, interesting kind of quirky, Russian watch thing is picking up some popularity. So if you have one of these, please leave a comment down below. Let everybody else know what you think of it. And that's it. Like I said, many more watch reviews coming soon, so make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all at the next one.